It looks really good, simple to throw together, and then it takes 50 minutes to cook in the oven, so I gotta get whipping along. Uh, simple ingredients is all you're going to need. There's some meat in the sink, but otherwise we need some cornbread mix. I love the Krusty's brand, and I'm using the honey muffin. I just think it's sweet and delicious. We have some Rotel, so it's like diced tomatoes style, some black beans, corn, uh, I'm adding a red bell pepper and then an onion and some enchilada sauce and then to make the corn we need or sorry whatever that is cornbread uh, we need some milk and an egg so I need to pull the egg out but otherwise oh maybe some oil too okay let me whip it up first things first I'm gonna do my mise en place and you guys is that where Misen got its name from? Misen? Like Misen Plas? I don't think so, but maybe. All right, did you know that you're supposed to leave the root on when you chop up an onion? You know, it's just the little things I learned from Rachel Ray throughout my days. And really, I feel like another great addition to this would be a jalapeno, but I'm cooking for some kids. So I feel like the less heat, the better. I even got in my Rotel just a mild. And then, I don't know if you know this. Oh, this is medium, watch out. The enchilada sauce comes in different varieties of spice. That is something I had no idea about until I made the black beans, uh, I don't know, in my last What's For Dinner video, which would be a great side dish to this, but also there's black beans in here, so I don't know. Anyway, the uh, black bean recipe I shared was holy smokes. Fantastic, one of the best I've ever had in my entire life, if I do say so myself, okay? So I would encourage you to try that one out. And it never hurts to have a bean side dish. I mean, unless you're keto or something. But for me, I love the beans. The more the merrier, bring them on. I'll eat them all. My kids love them too. I'm gonna grab the bottom off of this one because I feel like that's a lot of wasted pepper down there. I'm gonna dice up my pepper too. I'm using red. I thought I bought two green bell peppers a while ago. And when I say a while, I mean just a couple of days ago, but <laughs> apparently I grabbed red peppers. Use what you have, work with what you got. Beautiful veggies, let's bring it to the stove. I'm gonna throw two pounds of ground beef on the stove top, along with the onions and peppers. Cook it all up together. I'm also going to add a little bit of salt and pepper. The meat isn't fully thawed because, well, I thought I had my life together and I pulled it out, but then what I didn't know happened was the sink drained, but it's mostly thaw. Once the beef and veggie mixture is all mixed together and cooked, I'm going to throw in the Rotel enchilada sauce and the black beans and corn that I drained. And I can't find my small drainer, so here we are. I feel like we should add more than this. I'm gonna add some taco seasoning to flavor it. Ugh, I never use this stuff. It's like so hard in there, but I need to use it up. I normally just do, you know, the traditional cumin and paprika and chili powder, like homemade taco seasoning, but I need to use it up, you know? Did it expire? Oh, <laughs> it did expire, oh, okay. Well, then here we go. Some onion seasoning up in here. A little chili powder, here we go. Never hurt anyone. Some garlic, I like that. Cumin for the smokiness. A little paprika. And then a little salt and pepper. And for fun, I'll just throw in a little bit of Italian seasoning. 
It's so much fun. All right, mix that up. Let those flavors really simmer and develop for a couple minutes. Ooh, that looks real good. Looking fresh. While that cooks, I'm gonna throw together just the um, honey cornbread. By the way, this is like the best corn muffin mix or cornbread. Ooh, so good. You don't even have to eat it with butter and it's sweet because of the honey, but not too sweet. I'm gonna throw an egg in there. Two thirds cup milk. I'm gonna use rice milk and uh, whatever I had left of that. It's basically water. Not very creamy. And then one third cup of oil. I'm just following the package directions. And then I'm gonna give this a mix. Ooh, creamy. So to this mixture, I'm going to add in a handful of cheese or two and then mix that in. Oh my God, this is like chili, but not. All right, this is actually fantastic. Let's put it in a casserole. The butterfly, oh, oh that's old. Let me see, a casserole. Casseroles are my favorite. Dump everything together, throw it in the oven and do the dishes while it's cooking. Oh my goodness, see, I got a smaller dish but I could have totally gotten a bigger dish. This is a lot of casserole, but it's not a lot of corn muffin mix. I do recommend doubling the muffin mix, but that's just me. I'm going to spread this over top, try to make an even layer. Ooh, it kind of spreads out on its own. Oh yeah, perfect. Top of the cheese, what's going on? You better believe it. A little bit more cheese over top and then throw it in the oven 350 degrees for 50 minutes. All right, looking good, feeling good. I've been waiting to share this recipe with you. It was one of my absolute favorites of all time, the tamale pie. I didn't know what to expect, but oh my heavens, uh, all of it worked. The top, the middle, the bottom. There wasn't a middle, but everything together, it was one of my favorites. I would highly encourage you to try this or something like it, some variation of it, whatever you like in the middle or bottom, <laughs> whatever you want to call it. But I would make this again tonight. It was delicious. I can't rave enough about it. Please know 10 out of 10 stars. And it's on a scale of one to five. Oh, hello. Oh my, it's my guy <laughs> Time for dinner again. Tonight I'm going to throw together a barbecued turkey meatloaf. I think I have everything that I need. And then as a side dish, I'm running low on like vegetables around here. So I have some Brussels sprouts last thing to make. So I'm gonna shave these up, probably cut up an onion. Okay, so Brussels sprouts and onion as a side. And then for the carb, I'm doing nice white creamy potatoes. These taste like, like a home fry, like a French fry, the way that I cook them. Uh, my kids gobble them up, I gobble them up. They're delicious. And I feel like it's just a good, everything's gonna be shoved in the oven. So minimal prep time, maybe like 10 minutes and then it'll cook for, I'm debating if I'm gonna make like the full meatloaf because that cooks for 50 minutes-ish, or is this how much, it's a pound and a half of meat, or what I normally do is cook like the mini meatloafs, I just mound them into like little mounds, little like this, and then you know I put them on a sheet pan and they cook a lot faster that way. 15, 20 minutes and they're done. And then you have like a personal size portion for each person. Uh, I don't know, I got some extra time on my hands today before dinner. So we might go full loaf if I have one available. But I think I made zucchini bread. Anyway, let's throw this stuff together and make it a bowl. Okay, holy smokes. I don't know how I can never find a bowl. I actually don't even know if I need a bowl first. Of course, I need, but am I supposed to cook the... I'll be right back. All right, my goodness, it's like I've never made meatloaf before. Fun fact, we used to have meatloaf Mondays back when I had my life together. It's been a while, it's been a really long time. I don't think I knew you when I had my life together. <laughs> it was back when I only had one kid. And honestly, meatloaf Monday didn't even last that long. If you're wondering, meatloaf Monday is just what it sounds. You eat meatloaf every Monday. It takes the guesswork out of dinner. Guess what today is? You're wrong. It is Thursday. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna dice up. <laughs> it's like I've never cut something before. Oh man. What is in my thumb? What? That's gross, hold on. All right, I'm just gonna have to deal with it. We planted our star fruit tree today, but I'm pretty sure that was from the onion. I'm just going to chop up this onion pretty fine pieces. Usually when I make meatloaf, I don't do the pepper and onion bits, but I can totally see how they would add a lot of flavor. So I have an orange bell pepper. I think a green one would work best. 
I thought I bought two green bell peppers, but apparently I didn't. All right, this is all the slicing and dicing we need to do. So I am going to bring the cut up veggies to the stovetop. I'm gonna throw in a little bit of olive oil, extra virgin style, and then I'm gonna throw in my veg. I'm gonna season it with a little bit of salt and pepper, like every good chef, and let that cook down just a few minutes until it's soft. While that's cooking, I'm gonna throw together the rest of the meatloaf mixture. I have a pound and a half of ground turkey. It's more lean than ground beef, but I don't know, it's interchangeable, I feel like. I'm gonna crack an egg in here. I'm gonna throw in a hefty handful of the panko breadcrumbs. I'm using panko because it's like a clean palette. If you only have, you know, seasoned breadcrumbs, obviously, use it. We all know Italian seasoning is king. And then I'm going to add a little bit of this Kinder's, I think it's Steakhouse, the steak blend. Ooh hoo, fancy schmear. And you know what I really like? Gotta get this flowing. I really like more of this. That's what I would really like. All right, ooh yeah, there it is. And I'm gonna also throw in, what am I supposed to keep these in the fridge? Have they expired? Ooh, those veggies smell real good. Okay, now this is my favorite. Ooh, well, more is merrier. This is such a, oh my gosh, I'm, I just smelled it and then I figured you would want to whiff too. This is Kinder's Buttery Steakhouse Seasoning Blend. Holy fajoli. It is one of my all time favorites. It is so good. I get it at Costco. It's like the Costco size. Oh, put this crap on everything. It's real good. Is that it? The onions are looking like onions and peppers. And I'm gonna throw some garlic in here. This garlic kind of smells like acetone. Is that a bad sign? I'm almost at the end of the jar, so I can't give up now. My mama didn't raise no quitter. That's good enough to cook the bacteria out, you think? I'm gonna crack this whip first. Mix all of this together. You're not supposed to manage the meat much because then apparently it gets real tough. So just a little bit, and then I'm going to add the veggies. And then, here's a kicker, since this ain't yo mama's meatloaf, I'm gonna take a bowl, and I have this really great Sweet Baby Ray's No Sugar Added. Uh, what? Thank you so much, so Sweet Baby Ray, this tastes so good. You don't, you won't even miss the sugar, is what I'm telling you. You need, oh, about a cup of this. And then we're going to sweeten it up because you know there's sugar in this ketchup. About a quarter cup of the ketchup here. How much sugar is in this? Oh, only four grams uh, for one tablespoon. <laughs> I like to get the um, Thrive Market ketchup and I think that has very little sugar. I could be wrong, I don't know. I used to get no sugar added ketchup and the kids really didn't even notice so I should get back on to doing that. Since this is mixed so nicely, now I have another bowl to wash, I'm going to add a little bit of that in here and then reserve the rest for the topping. You know what, I've had meatloaf from Cracker Barrel before, not barbecue meatloaf. Uh, back when we used to eat there, back before it gave me food poisoning. <laughs> but their meatloaf was pretty good. I have a feeling this is gonna taste better. Everything you make at home tastes better, right? This is what my aunt does. She gets a real big pan and creates her own dang loaf because the women in my family are trailblazers and they don't follow your rules. I did not cut these onions small en enough. My kids are gonna be like, what is they're not used to seeing onions in their meatloaf, but you know, I think it's gonna be good. So form it into a nice loaf here. Cool, cool, cool. It's okay though, cause I'm gonna cover it with this and no one will even see the onions. Keep the loaf nice and moist here. All right, looks good, feels good, but we're not done. Okay, dope, we're gonna take some potatoes. Apparently it's been a while since I bought these, but I don't care. I'm going to cut them up anyway. I'm gonna cut them right in half. All right, I have my potatoes, and I would normally do this straight on the pan, but I don't wanna mess up my meatloaf. I'm just going to season them in a bowl. Ugh, that's a lot. Whatever, it's what I cut. I'm just gonna throw a little bit of oil in there. Salt, a lot because they're potatoes and they can handle it, and then some pepper up in there. Ooh, how about this? All right, I was in a bad mood for a second, and <laughs> I just came out of it. The Kinder Steakhouse Seasoning Blend. And then, for fun, 
We're gonna throw on this blend too. Some butter seasoning, this is literally the best. Okay, that's gonna taste really good. Hey girl, if you want these to get really crispy, get put them on like a pan, cut side down, like so, and then they'll get so crispy it'll blow your mind. But for now, I'm going to pour them. Oh no, I made too many. My pan is not large enough on either side of the loaf. And these, yeah, they're maybe the top ones will get crispy. That's okay. Into the oven. Probably an hour. Back to it. I'm gonna cut up some sprouts and onion. And what I've been liking lately, I just cut off the ends and then, um, what do they call this? <laughs> the look in your head is right in the way. I can't chop my fingers off. They call this slicing and dicing. I learned the proper term from cordon bleu. Shaved, it's called shaved. I'm gonna shave my Brussels sprouts. If you have a better, easier way to do this when you don't have a baby head in front of your face, that's probably a better option. But I do like the way that these cook up. And the, I, I like roasting them in the oven too, but whatever, I just changed my mind at the last minute because I made these for breakfast the other day and they blew my socks off. So they only take a few minutes to cook up. So I just threw them into a little pan with a little bit of oil, season them, salt and pepper, mix them together. The Brussels sprouts and onion is coming along, are coming along. And then over here I just threw a bag salad together, but I just thought it looked too pretty not to share it with you. It is apple, walnut maybe, what's in there? Pecans, I don't know, some kind of nut and uh, some kind of cheese. I don't don't ask me what it is. It came in a bag <laughs> But it looks really good. We've had it before. I think it's walnut. I would show you the package, but I just threw it away She's beauty and she's grace She's Miss United States. I'm just throwing a little bit of greenery a little bit of parsley on there Just to make it look a little more pleasing <laughs> a little presentation goes a long way Okay, we eat with our eyes first, but here's the meatloaf all finished. I'll cut up a slice, but I figured uh, this looks pretty dang good. Why does Meatloaf get a bad rep? Look at look at her. She is a model and a half. Somebody call Vogue. Somebody call the Food Network. She should be on the cover next month. Which side should I cut? Should I cut this one? All right, we'll see. Hopefully it's f done. <laughs> Hopefully it's cooked, right? Ooh! Bon on me! Ooh, my heavens. I feel like I'm going into the gates of heaven. Meatloaf, ma 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 meatloaf. Ma ma ma, time to eat the meatloaf. This doesn't sound very appetizing. Meatloaf, give me the meat. All right, that's enough. Well, it's dinner time, time for dinner. And tonight I'm going to make Thai chili turkey stir fry. I don't know if it's gonna be enough because uh, let me double think this. There are no beans in this chili. Little suspicious. Takes 25 minutes to make. Rice takes 20. Can't have dinner without rice. I'm gonna throw some rice in the Instant Pot and then gather all the ingredients that I need to make this. It should be a really snappy, quick, simple meal. Is it razzle dazzle fancy? We're gonna find out. So here's what I'm gonna throw in here. I've got an onion, I've got a couple of bell peppers, ground turkey, it's a pound and a half. I have this green curry paste. I think it goes yellow, green, red in terms of like mild flavor. I don't know, I could be totally wrong, but that's okay. I also have some garlic. Oop, need one more thing from the fridge. What is that on my counter? Don't ask me questions. I have cocoa aminos or soy sauce, and then the sweet chili sauce. I'm gonna grab some fresh ginger, or use ginger paste if you have it. I'm just gonna cut off a little nub here, and uh, we're gonna throw all this crap together. It's gonna be delicious. Since I didn't really plan a veggie, I'm glad I have these to throw in the microwave. You know how when your fridge gets a little cold, this onion feels like it's frozen. No, I think it's just really cold and I'm hot because we've been outside, I don't know. I'm gonna chop up this onion. I'm gonna cut everything up pretty small. Uh, so this and the bell peppers, <laughs> really that's it. And I'm sure you can throw in any vegetable that you like to have in a stir fry. I'm gonna chop up this bell pepper. Oh, I didn't record any of that, that's cool. All right, just slicing and dicing over here. Julian, dicing up. And I guess you don't need veggies on the side because we're obviously throwing some veggies in with the meat. I just think the more the merrier. They won't hurt to have more. 
All right, since I'm cooking ground turkey, it doesn't have a lot of fat in it, and I have all those veggies, I'm gonna put a little bit of oil in the pot, throw the meat in, along with all of the veggies. That'll really bulk it up. And then a little bit of salt and pepper, just to get things moving along, and then let that cook out. All right, I'm gonna throw some garlic in here once everything, ooh, that, mm, that's whatever. And then some ginger, someone told me instead of um, you know, cutting it up, slicing and dicing, that I could use the microplane. And I thought, you know, why didn't I think of that? Prefer to have the paste on hand, but really fresh is always best. So I just had a little nub. A little goes a long way, but I might throw in a little more than that. That's not much. Especially since it was so easy, but you know what? I don't want to go overboard with this because it can get spicy real fast. I'm gonna let that cook through. And then I'm gonna throw in about a quarter cup of this sweet chili sauce. My kids like to put this straight on rice. It's delicious. And then a quarter cup of cocoa aminos. And then I have this uh, curry paste, so I'm gonna throw some of that in too. And then give it a mix. I'm gonna give it a taste test to see where we're at. Perfect. I'm also gonna add a little bit of cilantro in here and then more for a garnish. This brings some freshness to the dish. And then I have a bed of lettuce I can throw it on. You can throw it over rice, I'm cooking rice, and then more veggies. Another home run. What more can I say about it? It was delicious. I ate it with just a bunch more veggies. Um, I think maybe we had cauliflower rice that night, but it was so good. We had several more people over, I think three extra people over, maybe four. So I was worried it wouldn't be enough, but I got seconds. <laughs> I would make this meal again 100. Another day, another dinner. I'm gonna throw together some Fajita chicken it used to be one of my favorite things to get what I saw a meme about it the other day It's like if you want to let everyone else know what you're having for dinner that night at the restaurant order Fajitas because you know when they bring the grill tray out and it's all sizzling and you're like wow Anyway, that's what we're doing tonight. Everyone's gonna know that we're making grilled fajita chicken I'm also <laughs> probably I don't know what I'm gonna serve it with but I think a side that I'll also share with you But that'll come later today um, super quick, oh, it's a marinade. You guys know I love a good marinade. Super quick and easy, uh, just a few ingredients. Honey, oil, some spices, chili powder, cayenne pepper, cumin, you can leave the cayenne out, I don't know, I just have it in my cupboard, and then some salt and pepper, honey, oh, and limes, that's the best, citrus elevates a dish every time. So I'm going to start with a quarter cup of olive oil. That looks pretty good to me. I'm gonna throw a couple tablespoons of honey in here. Just some good squeezes. I like to go heavy handed on, well, basically everything, right? More means more flavor. I'm going to add the juice of two limes and I'm just rolling them to uh, get the juices flowing on the inside. Oh, those smell like heaven. These are nice and fresh. I mean, come on, summertime, where are you at? I can't wait. If you don't have a grill, you can probably throw these in the, your oven. You can probably throw it on your stove top. Get a GFG, go to the thrift store and grab one of those. You know the thrift store is gonna have some GFGs, George Foreman grills. That's a lot of juice that came out of just that one, but I'm gonna go above and beyond. Oh gosh, the bag, this happens every time. I'm gonna throw the that in there too, why not? A little bit of smoky cumin going in there, giving it that taco. If you just have taco seasoning, you know, like the pre-made stuff, I'm sure that would work too. A little bit of chili powder, a little bit of cayenne for kick, and then just some salt and pepper. Those are just the OGs, right? Just a little bit of each. I'm gonna mix this up, and then I'm gonna add the chicken thighs. Sometimes these Costco packages, that one had three in there. I think this one has three too. Sometimes it has hardly any, and I'm like, well, what am I gonna feed my family? I'm gonna zip this up. And then let this marinate you, if you have your life together. You can do this the day before, or even like, you know, shortest time, I'd say 30 minutes, but the longer the better. I'm doing this in the morning, so I'm just gonna let it marinate all day, and every time I open the fridge, I'm just gonna give it a good shaky. And if you're wondering, oh, Kim, you kinda have your life together. Your chicken is thawed out. No, I planned to make this yesterday. <laughs> I'm gonna throw the rest of dinner together, just um, throwing together a little side salsa, bean, corn, bean, just a singular bean, and then um, just these green chilies, red bell pepper. It's like a mango salsa or any other salsa. I'm just using, and like basically whatever you have. Veggie salsa without tomatoes, a non-tomato salsa, summer salsa, whatever the heck you wanna call it. 
a rose by any other names. I'm also gonna make mashed potatoes. I've got green beans in the oven and I have to pull my meat out of the fridge. It's always better to cook meat when it is room temperature. It supposedly cooks more evenly that way. So let's throw this salsa together. Very versatile. And you guys know, I just like to go off ideas anyway. I get inspiration. And I am just going to throw in a red bell pepper. I'm gonna dice it. There's something about, when's the last time you had a bell pepper? I should eat them more often. And then I'm gonna grab just a handful of the cilantro and chop this up. Oh my gosh, the fragrance of this. This is what I live for, food. I live to eat. And then I'm gonna roll my lime just to get the juices flowing on the inside. I'm gonna need the juice from that. And I'm kind of second guessing adding these. I'm gonna see if I have a jalapeno in there and uh, we'll go from there. I did drain the corn and black beans and I rinsed them. I'm just gonna add the peppers and cilantro to that. Some lime juice to brighten this dish up. This is super quick and easy to throw together too. And then a little bit of salt and pepper. Look what I found in the back of the fridge. It looks pretty good, but the top is concerning. So, oh my gosh, actually it's fantastic. I'm just gonna take, ooh, I'm gonna cut my finger off. I'm gonna take a finger off. I'm gonna take the seeds out of this and just Add it in here. Oh, I'm making salsa. 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 I'm gonna dice this up. I'm trying to not touch the inside of it because I touch my eyes a lot and it's just a bad situation right there. All right, here we go. I'm gonna add this in too. Sometimes I add a little bit of oil to a salsa like this or apple cider vinegar, just a little bit. That little, oh my gosh, what is that? This is a nice, fresh, thing to put put on my plate tonight. I could have made this earlier in the day and threw it in my fridge for it to cool, but I didn't. I'm grilling outside tonight and honestly, it is fantastic. There's a thunderstorm rolling in and the thunder rolls. And I'm not a grill master, but uh, we'll see how it comes out. I don't know if these are done, but I cannot wait any longer. I am absolutely famished. I need to eat. I can smell the chili powder in here and the lime. I'm excited to dive in. Oh my gosh, everything on the grill tastes so much better. Oh my God. I'm salivating thinking about this. Everyone loved it at the table, everyone. They said, mom, this is the best chicken you've ever made. Put this on your menu plan. So easy to recreate. And simple ingredients, not many of them. I would, oh my gosh, I'm drooling. I might put it on my menu plan again this weekend. I just chop it up and serve it that way. I am going to make something delicious for dinner tonight. Easy, but also a spin. You guys always know I'm trying to elevate things and I really think this is gonna elevate it. Baked ziti, don't let that scare you off. It's something that I ate it was one of like the five meals that my mom made <laughs> growing up. Although I feel like I didn't eat it that often. Uh, baked ziti, which I used to think was called bagged ziti because we always had to beg for it. I'm just, I don't know why. I just always thought it was called baked ziti. Uh, it's not, it's baked. So we gotta turn our ovens on to 350 degrees. All right, I've got some of this stuff, which is, I used to just make it noodles, cheese, mix it up, throw it in the oven. Sauce too. <laughs> but there is an elevated way to do things always and that's the way I'm gonna do it. I've got some fresh garlic, some tomatoes. If you have canned diced tomatoes, use that. <gasps> I also, you got, okay, well, hey, there's a short story long to this. Isn't there always? I thought I had everything I needed for dinner. This was the reason I was gonna make this dish because I had this left over from Easter. Although it doesn't expire until June. And this one that I got today, it's, okay, so this is why I wanted to make it. I was like, I've got the ricotta, I gotta use it up, all this stuff. And then I had no onions. So I said, well, I can't make anything without onions. And I can't believe I ran out of them. So I ran to the store for some onions and I thought, well, you know what, while I'm there, I might as well get the rest of the crap that I need. So I got another ricotta cheese because I figured, well, I might as well double it, right? And then while I was there, I grabbed a basil plant. 
I brought it home to die with me, really, is what I'm gonna do. I'm just gonna try again, you know? There's no use in not trying. Fail until you don't, my friends. So, this is also going to be turkey. I have some ground turkey. I've got three pounds. I've been thawing it out all day, so I'm gonna cook that up. But first, I have to get my mise en place ready. So, let's throw this sucker together, shall we? Also, a salad on the side, because roughage. First thing I'm gonna do is cut up two onions. These are looking kind of small, so I might reevaluate and do three onions because you guys know how I live my life, okay? I love onions. I just, I don't understand how some people don't love onions. They're so sweet, they're so good. They add so much flavor and really they just melt in your mouth. You know what I wonder? I'm gonna add one more because that's a piddly amount. And somehow this still doesn't feel like enough onion. But back to things I wonder about. I wonder if people who say they don't like onions have never like tried cooking them different ways. Like do they like onion rings? You know what I mean? Do they like the bloomin' onion at Outback? Who doesn't like a bloomin' onion? I feel like vegetables are just so delicious and packed full of flavor. There's no way you won't like it if it's cooked like in different ways, you know? Do they like French onion soup? Those Japanese restaurants have some really good onion soup. Do they not like soup in general? Because that's a main component. I'm gonna add the onion to the ground turkey and I just grabbed ground turkey because I have it in my freezer and I need to use it up, but you can use beef or whatever you like. Sausage would be great flavor. I'm gonna season this, a little bit of salt and pepper. Groundbreaking, I know. Then I'm gonna cut up a couple of tomatoes. In theory, I'd be using two cans, so I have four tomatoes, and these were in my fridge. I'm needing to use these up as well. I can't remember why I bought tomatoes initially, but I got a whole crate of them from Costco. I don't know what the heck I was thinking. But I have made homemade tomato sauce before with tomatoes. Uh, I'm not gonna do that right now, but I kind of am. I might only do two or three. I haven't decided. We'll see how many this gets me. But I'm just going to slice and dice. Petite, if you will. All the tomatoes are cut. I have a questionable bulb of garlic here, but you know what? I think they look okay on the inside. That's how I feel some days. Questionable on the outside, but on the inside, I'm all right. So I'm just gonna peel this whole head. I'm going for it, you guys. I'm doing the entire head of garlic. I just smash it, and then I have these cloves, and I'm just gonna pop them into, so I'm doing the lazy way today. Pop them into here, and then it just dices it for me. No skill involved at all? Nice. And then very last thing, I'm just going to Grab a bushel off of my basil plant here. Is there a correct way to do this? So it will grow back? I don't know, guys. I'm all kinds of messed up over here. Please grow back. I'm just gonna take the leaves. I already washed them, don't worry about it. <laughs> not worried about any of this. I'm gonna roll them up so it's easy for me to slice and dice. And I'm just going to cut these into ribbons. Gonna add so much flavor. Fresh herbs, always elevate a dish. Mm, just the smell of this alone, I'm like, Carabas, hello? Carabas is Italian, right? I don't eat out enough. I'm adding the garlic. You know what's funny? One time Alex and I had a gift card to Carabas and I think we went to Olive Garden instead. I was like, wait, isn't this the same restaurant? <laughs> or vice versa, I can't remember, but it was funny. Anyway, we had to pay. <laughs> I'm gonna throw the tomatoes in here too and let these cook out just a little bit. I'm gonna add a couple, I don't know, tablespoons, half cup of Italian seasoning to this, and then mix that up, let the heat kind of wake up those spices. And then I'm going to add in two jars of spaghetti sauce. This is 24 ounces, so whatever you like. I really like the vineyard, Martha's Vineyard. Oh my gosh, speaking of Martha Stewart. Did you, did you know she's 80 years old? Or maybe 81? I don't even know, you guys. I always grab a little water. Oh my gosh, how do I do this thing? Woo, there it goes. And then just kind of shake up the rest and add the rest in here. But did you know that Martha Stewart is on the cover of Sports Illustrated Bathing Suit? 
amazing, but also secondly amazing, I had no idea that she was 81. I thought she was like 60. I'm gonna throw in that, uh, what, what is that, parsley? Parsley tastes like grass. Basil's better. Challenge me. I'm gonna throw that in, and that might be a mistake. I don't really know, I'm just, I'm doing it. On to the baked part of this ziti. I'm gonna throw in the, I have two tubs of ricotta. They're 15 ounces each. Wolfgang is annoyed that I'm speaking. I'm gonna throw two eggs in here. You can do fresh herbs for this, but I find that dried Italian seasoning really fits the bill. So I'm gonna throw some of that in, along with some salt and pepper. I'm gonna throw in half a cup of Parmesan cheese and two cups of mozzarella cheese. I'm gonna do two pretty big handfuls here. Maybe a little more than that and then some for my mouth. There's just something about packaged, pre-shedded cheese. It really just reminds me of my childhood. I need a bigger bowl and I always make this mistake, but whatever, I'm gonna make it work. It's nicely incorporated, so I'm gonna set this to the side and get some dishes. Now for the layers, I'm going to assemble everything. And if I didn't tell you already, I have some cooked noodles. I've got two boxes of penne, and to prevent them from sticking together, I just throw in some olive oil. So here comes the fun part. I have a couple of dishes, and I'm just going to layer with, I don't know, a couple spoonful, just a nice layer on the bottom with the sauce. I'm gonna throw some noodles on top, half the box, half the cooked noodles. And then I'm gonna divvy up the ricotta mixture Half of it in one, half of it in the other. If you're only making one, just throw the whole bit right in the middle here. And I feel, well, hopefully this is the right thing to do. <laughs> Try to spread it out a little bit. And I feel like I have one baked ziti recipe that I've shared with you, my gosh, probably five years ago. It's been a while. So I might have to go back in the archives and see if I can find it. Sometimes it's really hard for me to even find the recipes that I've shared, but my sister-in-law shared it um, with me. So I'm gonna try to see, but it has sour cream in it. And Alex is like, this is the best. But then we went to her house. Oh, is that what she made? We went to her house the other day um, for a little get together and she has some baked ziti. And I said, is this the one with sour cream? And it wasn't, but again, Alex is like, this is the best. I was like, yeah, it's your favorite, but it was a different recipe. So I feel like he just likes baked ziti, which is why I'm making it. I'm gonna go in with the rest of the tomato sauce on top. When I tell you I had to reference my, the recipe a hundred times <laughs> to make sure I was doing this right, Normally when I make baked ziti, I just mix everything together and then throw it into a casserole dish, right? Because like this takes a little more time and effort and energy. And I just thought, what the heck am I doing? So I put cheese on, put another layer of the sauce and then the noodles. And then I thought, wow, I put way too many noodles on the bottom. I didn't divvy this up correctly, but it didn't matter because it all mixes together at the end. We had a couple of uh, people over to eat and they enjoyed it. Alex really liked it. I really liked it. It was a winner for sure. And oh, I did top it with some more cheese. I don't know how much, but definitely enough. I, I mean, I don't measure anyway, but a handful and a half, whatever, just to coat the top. Oh, and then once you put the noodles on, you put in another layer of sauce. So really the regatta layer, the and, and yes, I know I'm so Italian. The ricotta, however you want to say it. Oh, isn't she a beaut? Look at her, I'm just gonna sprinkle with a little bit of color, and that's what makes it fancy, okay? You're not really gonna taste that, it's just for looks. We eat with our eyes first. This is the most, oh my gosh, and so fragrant. Oh wow, all the senses are coming to me. I must be real hungry, that's just basil. You can use parsley if you want, if you have it. I just bought a basil plant, so I'm trying to get my use out of it before it dies. <laughs> Here's the baked ziti, looking real fly. I'm happy about it, dinner time, I'm gonna eat. So happy about it. I even served it with rolls. It was carb central when we were eating this, but I didn't even care, it was so dang good. The sauce alone, yep, would make that again. Love that it was turkey, didn't even notice. No one, no, does anyone ever notice when it's like turkey versus ground beef? I guess maybe if you don't season it enough <laughs> and then they can really taste the meat, but uh, this was flavorful and delish. You guys know I always love to add a little dessert because you have to finish off the week with dessert. It is the law. 
I found this chocolate peanut butter ooey gooey cake and I thought, you know what, that sounds real good. And it calls for a box cake mix, but you don't make it the way that it calls for on the package. So I'm gonna get what I need. I'm gonna do a thick cake in a nine by nine or a thin cake in a nine by 13. Choices. Decisions, decisions. I've got a middle ground here. I feel like this is bigger than a nine by nine, but smaller than nine by, do you know what I mean? Perfect in between, and that's how I live my life. Mostly because I don't have a nine by nine. But we make do because you work with what you have. I'm gonna melt one stick of butter. Bill Nye, the science guy. Bill, 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 Bill. He's got the same birthday as you? Yeah. One stick of butter melted, and I'm gonna throw in one bag of the cake mix, and this is German chocolate. It must be German chocolate. And then I'm gonna throw in one egg, and that's gonna be ooey gooey goodness. I told you I'll, I'll I just spread it out in this pan. Maybe thicker is better. Hold on. Okay, I'm gonna grease. I, you know, I. It just. I think this pan will be better. A little thicker is always better. So I'm just gonna spread it out in this pan. I did have it. I forgot. It had some stuff in it. I just. Had there are so many steps to this process. Mix in, not mix in, beat up some cream cheese. Oh my god! I don't know, what was that? Oh no. Ah! Oh no! I'm trying to put them back in, and maybe they just didn't catch. I know, I pulled it out, and Avelina said the other day, oh, so we're doing this all the old fashioned way? <laughs> just use one. Oh, that's a good idea. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Ah, it's not a good idea. Oh, the worst. Oh. That's real you dumb. Here, you can lick those. Do you want me to order one of those on Amazon? No, I don't. I already ruined it. <laughs> Do you want me to order one on Amazon? Just return it. No, I don't. So I don't just, want just, it. Just I use it like five times. There's no, I'm not buying another one. It's garbage. It's garbage. On the burnt reminder. They're not, they're not getting any. She sweet. burned that. Yeah, I burned it on the stove. It's probably my fault. Oh, that's, that's probably <laughs> well, we're continuing on without the beaters. Two eggs. I don't know. We're just gonna beat with our hands, you know? And then one cup of peanut butter. I feel like that's good enough. I'm gonna use my muscles and probably pass out from exhaustion. I'm just gonna beat all this together. I'm gonna add in two cups of confectioner sugar. I'm not sure if I'll survive this one. I have one stick of butter here. <laughs> it's the most workout I've done in, I don't know, a week. I'm gonna add this in and then I'm gonna whisk it in and this is what makes the cake ooey and gooey. Is it called buttery? Oh yeah, buttery ooey gooey. Yeah, it, I, I'm pretty sure it's gonna live up to its name here. I'm supposed to add vanilla extract to this as well, but I am done mixing. I'm pouring this mixture over the unbaked layer that we just did. And then I'm gonna throw this into the oven 350 degrees for 50 minutes. And then there's another layer. Salmonella, I dare you. Do not recommend, that is weird. For this final layer, we need three quarters cup of chocolate chips, maybe a little more. And some for the chef. I've had a day, it's taken me two days to put this thing together. I got some peanut butter chips. Did you know that they sold these? Yeah, they do. A quarter cup of that, some for me too. These are great, I'm gonna add some more. Also gonna do more chocolate, I need it. You know what, this is a jam. One chocolate, one peanut butter. I feel like we need two peanut butter, one chocolate. That's a good ratio. Maybe three peanut butter, one chocolate. I'm just using it as an excuse. I'll replenish. Don't worry, a little bit more. Won't hurt anyone. Unless you have diabetes. You know, I've been trying to eat less carbs. It's not working out for me, <laughs> but at least I'm trying. Half a cup of peanut butter is going in here. And I think that's a pretty cool addition. And then to melt this, I'm gonna heat up some heavy cream. Ooh. Hey, you know what happens when you think you set a timer and then like an hour and a half goes by and you ask Google, hey Google, how much time is left on that timer? And then Google says, hey, you have no timer set. And so it got a little crispy over here. 
I'm not sure. I mean, it is ooey and gooey and buttery. <laughs> I still have the top layer to make, so I'm gonna let this cool and then do the top layer, and we'll we'll see where that gets us. I'm gonna melt the stuff over the stove top. I have half a cup of heavy whipping cream. I'm gonna do a little more since we have a little more. Once the cream is warm, I'm gonna pour it over here and it's just gonna melt all the chocolate chips and peanut butter. This is a ganache, if you are unaware. This is how you make it. It's gonna be a delicious topping. See how it comes together here? Just keep on mixing. I haven't spent enough time with this one yet to let you know just how good it is. I did take a small bite last night and it all oh, ooey gooey is the right word to use to describe this because yes it was. I haven't even gotten Alex's opinion. You know what, let me just go ask him. Well, I called, he didn't answer, he's in a meeting, it's fine. Ju let's just assume that this is amazing because it is. I did take a bite, so I feel like I know enough about it. I'm just, here's what I'm afraid of, eating the entire confection because I have to control myself. And I said one bite, I took one bite and I said, mm, that's good, but I don't wanna eat the whole thing. So I have to refrain. So I'm waiting until tonight to take another bite. Otherwise, if I take one bite now, it's you know morning, middle of the day, and then uh, I'll leave it out and be like, oh, just one more. Mm, oh, that's one more, you know? And then little by little, the cake disappears. And I'm like, okay, it's not even a cake, whatever it is, the dessert. So I just, so I have to um, refrain a little bit self-discipline I'm pretty good at, at self-discipline so tonight I'll eat more I'll rave about it probably on Instagram and let you know how I feel but how can this not be good and I did overcook it because <laughs> my timer didn't time you guys know I've been having trouble with that but that's it that's everything that we ate hope you enjoyed this week of dinners if you did uh let me know which ones you make hey and if you want to subscribe put a little happy in your day I'll see you next time thanks for hanging out bye